Now, since we have, ladies and gentlemen, 11 countries and the theme is the mosaic, to put before you the full picture, we have Professor M. S. Sriram from the Indian Institute of Management, Bengaluru, who is an expert on microfinance sector in India. And we'll request him to kindly join us here on stage to present the big picture. Let's have a round of applause right there for Professor Sriram. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ratna, for uh, having me over. Um, I'll, I've been given originally 15 minutes. I'll try to conclude it in 10 minutes and save about five minutes for you guys. Uh, there's no point in uh, me repeating what has happened from the morning. Uh, what, what I'll try and present is uh, how uh, microfinance, uh, I mean, Jamuna was asking, how do you see microfinance in China 10 years down the line? Uh, if somebody had asked me 10 years ago, uh, I certainly would not have presented the picture that uh, uh, India is going through. Uh, as I was listening to these presentations, uh, it sounded very familiar, uh, except the 500% interest of Russia, of course. Uh, rest of the stories sounded very familiar. Uh, for our Chinese friend, till 2010, we did not have a formal definition of microfinance either. It was only the Malaga Malagam committee that gave us the formal definition of microfinance. But till then, all of us understood what microfinance was, but nobody knew or nobody had very clearly articulated what uh, microfinance was. Uh, similarly, as I keep uh, hearing these uh, presentations, uh, we, most of us know the story of Bangladesh very well. Uh, what for me was very striking was how two individuals have changed the face of microfinance in India and possibly removed microfinance from the map of India. Now, that's a very provocative statement to make, but between uh, Aadhaar, that is Nandan Nilekani, and Raghuram Rajan, uh, who gave us uh, small finance banks and payments banks, the frame, entire framework for that, the regulation and the licenses for that in very quick time. This has fundamentally changed the way uh, microfinance is looked at uh, in India. So therefore, what looked like very familiar and we were in the same club when uh, Philippines and uh, Indonesia and Bangladesh and Laos and Vietnam and Cambodia were presenting, suddenly the face has changed. Why has it changed? If you look, and that gets me back to Manoj Mittal's presentation in the morning that where are the next generation microfinance institutions? And what has fundamentally changed is that the complete mainstreaming of microfinance that has happened in India, essentially because unlike all other countries which keep, kept giving specific regulations for microfinance and a specific architecture for microfinance, what we, what, uh, you know, uh, RBI did under the leadership of Raghuram Rajan was just converted them into almost mainstream banks. I mean, the small finance banks are no different from the universal banks except for two or three minor details. And those minor details also don't matter as these banks grow because uh, they've also kept the option open for small finance bank to become big finance banks. So in that sense, it is, uh, it is bound to go in that direction. I mean, what was termed as a 100,000 rupee, 120,000 rupee loan limit has been up to, at the lower end, 2.5 million rupees. So that itself will take the microfinance industry past mudra. I mean, what we were talking about uh, mudra in the morning, it takes the uh, eight of the biggest microfinance institutions which have got the licenses past mudra. In addition, what we have seen is during the last two years itself, uh, I don't know how many mainstream banks have come and gobbled up microfinance institutions. IDFC has taken Gramavidil, uh, Ratnakar Bank has taken a significant stake in uh, Swadhar, uh, Samasta microfinance got gobbled up, BSS microfinance was taken over by Kotak Mahindra. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. That is one. The mainstream non-banking finance companies, Manapuram and Ashirwad, uh, Muthut and uh, Bellstar. So we have these uh, not only microfinance institutions becoming banks, but microfinance institutions being taken over by non-banking finance companies. And you know, we'll possibly see some more uh, um, action happening there. I mean. Uh, we've been hearing about uh, 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 
the erstwhile SKS, Bharat Financial Inclusion Limited, looking for a, a suitor, and we have been hearing about Indusind Bank aggressively looking for to buy off some of the people, gobble up some of the people. So, in that sense, uh, the way the architecture has changed in India is, I think, a result of small finance banks opening up and uh, giving banking an architecture. And therefore, the question is, what's going to happen to small uh, microfinance institutions? I'm, I know uh, for sure that Sadhan is incubating a few. Uh, SIDB is actively uh, helping uh, for the smaller microfinance institutions to come in. But microfinance, as we knew, till 2015, 16, 2017, will no longer, I suppose, be there. So the answer, Jamuna, is possibly we don't know. Right? And it just takes uh, one person to change that. The other person who's changed that is Nandan through his Aadhaar. I mean, the amount of stack uh, and uh, the amount of uh, new digital ideas that are coming and everything based on Aadhaar uh, is, is amazing. So, to our friends from the rest of Asia, uh, I think, you know, currently uh, the issues that India is grappling is completely different from the issues that we were grappling. And we were exactly on the same page like you about two years ago. Uh, I'll just stop there saying uh, this is one highlight that sort of struck me as I was listening. And uh, I think that's what I'd like to leave with you. Thank you. Sir, we'll request you to stay with us for just a moment more. Let's have a round of applause here for Professor Srinam. Thank you very much, sir. In a very concise and very few words, you brought out the essence of the entire thing. And of course, I will request now Bhumika if she can kindly join us here on stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for Professor Srinam, please. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, once, uh, once again, sir. May I now request Mr. Uday Bhatt, Director, Enterprise Business, Samsung India, to kindly join us on stage to deliver his presentation. Let's have a round of applause for Mr. Bhatt, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Uday Bhatt, and uh, I represent the enterprise mobility business of Samsung in India. Firstly, thank you, MFIN, for having us here. The entire Samsung Enterprise Mobility team is here to interact with you over the next two days. And that's going to be a real good experience for us, not just you. And it's a great pleasure, privilege, and honor to be amongst the doyens of the microfinance industry. Between today and tomorrow, and we've already crossed the halfway mark of day one, we've seen a lot of discussions around the state of the microfinance industry. Uh, where are we heading? And uh, Professor Shiram's insightful comments on how the industry looks is something that all of us need to imbibe to figure out how do we move forward as well. Uh, so we have been interacting with the microfinance industry for the last three years. And here is some bit of insights that we thought we would be sharing with you today. Professor Shiram did a huge favor on me. He said, I'll do it in 10 minutes. My first couple of slides would mean that he's already started what I wanted to share, that the microfinance industry, a part of the huge financial service industry, is going through a churn. Uh, we in the IT and mobility space hear about this financial inclusion, which all of you know by the back of your hand. Financial institutions have been providing services for many years, but I think the buzzword financial inclusion started with the PM Jandhan Yojana a couple of years back. The root of this, while everyone's providing financial services, the root of it is that the microfinance industry certainly caters to the people who have not been touched by the financial services earlier. And the very fact that access to finance to microfinance through the Mudra Bank, through priority sector lending of the other banks in the country today, we hear of mutual funds participating into the MFI lending. We have venture capitalists coming into this space, which clearly shows that the microfinance industry over the last couple of decades has played a significant role in promoting financial inclusion. Pardon me if that's not the right word, because I heard a couple of other uh, words being used for it. But we are laymen, and I would stick to that word at this moment. A couple of years back, as Professor Shiram mentioned, Small Finance Bank and Payments Bank came up. Again, 
a testimony to the role that the microfinance industry has played in this whole game. Eight out of the 10 new SFDs are microfinance institutions. So the lines are blurring between banks, institutions, and microfinance industries. And the market looks, as far as our outlook is concerned, more confusing for us, but I think more opportunity for the entire industry. When we look at the market, we see enormous opportunities. Not just credit, a host of other financial services coming into the play. The quality of offerings from the, uh, for the customers is improving day by day. And one of the things that we notice when we're in the field is that the customers are today becoming more discerning, even at the MFI women who are your customers. Because of the reach that is required, we are seeing more and more physical infrastructure being put across, business correspondence coming into the play. And as we said, Professor Shiram did harp upon it, the fact that banks are buying out MFIs, MFIs are merging, acquisitions are happening. So a lot of action is happening around this with the sole reason that there is a huge market to be addressed. So we see a lot of action around the financial inclusion, we see a huge market opportunity as well. Now, when we are in this situation, there are players who look at opportunities, but there are certainly some players who would look at these as challenges as well. Acquisition of uh, capital, human resources, expansion to new locations, risk management. These are the things that come to our mind when we are looking at this entire market. However, one of the things that is exclusive to all these opportunities or challenges is technology. And we have seen technology play or starting to play a very, very, very critical role as far as a MFI or a financial services industry growth is concerned. In the technology play, we are clearly seeing mobility being the center of this whole universe. One of the advantages that we've had is that we've jumped leaps and bounds Rather than learning through the whole gamut of uh, technology changes, we've leapfrogged into the entire mobile revolution today. And we are seeing today mobile banking being the buzzword, where mobile devices with the hardware and applications or software integrated into it playing a key role in mobile banking. We are seeing accounts, loan accounts, or saving accounts being opened in a GFE using biometric authentication. Digital payments, which was just a talk a year back, has kind of come out into the open. You have UPIs, you have digital wallets, and this is going to be a significant increase that we are going to see as far as the marketplace is concerned. We are also looking at the paperless transactions. Uh, somebody did mention that we are looking at paperless transactions so that it improves the overall efficiency of the system. So a year has made sure that mobile has become the center of all the technology changes that have happened in the microfinance industry. And I would stick to the discussion around the microfinance industry at this moment. And what is the main reason for that? The main reason is that it is critical for three key things that every microfinance company looks at today. Growth, efficiency, and how are you empowering your customers? When we are talking about growth, access to new customers, access to new members, delivering new loans to your members is the key critical area that you are all looking at. Mobile today helps you deliver exactly the same. The field force productivity has improved leaps and bounds because of introduction of the mobile technology in the field force today. How are we increasing efficiencies? All workflows that we have in the organization are in a device, be it a smartphone or be it a tablet. How are we empowering people? Imagine a JLG of five women who used to wait for a week to get a loan, now get a loan in a day's time. That is the power that the mobile has brought in as far as improving the way microfinance companies work in India today. It's early days today, but we're still hoping that the next one year or so would see it mature completely, and that will benefit our MFI customers the most. As I said, we've been working with the microfinance industry for the last three years. And how has it been as far as our engagement is concerned? We've seen that our products, our solutions, and our entire ecosystem that we have developed has benefited our customers, which is you, the maximum. 
This has made our solutions reliable, comprehensive, and affordable for you as well. Let's look at some of the elements that we've pieced together that have helped you improve your growth, your efficiency, and your empowerment as well. All of us know Samsung today is the leader in mobile technology. We have a range of smartphones and tablets that would help you. But device is only incidental. There are much more things, many more things, that are important apart from the device. And that's exactly what we have done in the last couple of years. Security, when you are empowering your team with the device to acquire customers, to open accounts, it's important that security is very, very important. Knox, which is our security platform, has enabled all our customers to have a secure device with absolutely no chance of misuse. I think that's a very critical thing that our customers look at today when they are buying mobile devices. Samsung today in India has a R&D force of about eight to 10,000 across Bangalore and Noida. That is the power that we bring for customization of applications into the Samsung devices for you. Because no two customers use the same application or use the same workflow processes. The Samsung Software Development Kit has been opened out to our ecosystem partners, which are the software vendors, to ensure customization is far more easier. When you're investing in mobile technology, you're not looking at it for a short period of time. Samsung today offers you the reliability of using it over a period of one, two, or three years with exceptional service supports and warranty supports as well. This is as far as Samsung is concerned. But when you look at your entire IT and mobile infrastructure, we have partnered large system integrators like IBM, FIS, and especially true for the SFB uh, customers of ours who are putting in together a complete new IT infrastructure. And they have ensured that the right solutions are provided to our customers. You would use mobile applications for different ways. And today in India, we have a partner ecosystem of over 90 independent software vendors who would build an application exactly the way you want, exactly the way your processes are supposed to run. Now, when we're looking at mobile investments, many of our customers fear technology obsolescence. We have a solution for that as well. So while you have your CapEx models going on for a while, we have now started off with OpEx models as well, which means that you have an operating lease of two years, one year, three years, and after that you switch over to a new technology that we are gonna to bring to you, which means that you're protected against the technology obsolescence as well. From a product perspective, when we looked at financial inclusion, when we looked at the Jandhan Yojana, we looked at what the trinity of growth would be, Jandhan, Aadhaar, and mobile. And we looked at what can we do to promote that. Uh, some of you during the lunch break would have already seen a video of this. And we've launched late last year the Galaxy Iris Tab. And this tablet is an Iris-based authentication device STQC and UIDIA compliant. EKYC eSigns, perfect. Highly secure because of Knox. In quarter four of last year, which is the October-November timeframe, we started piloting these devices with many of our customers. And today, most of the microfinance customers are using the Samsung Iris tab. This is just the beginning for us in terms of how are we going to support all our customers from a technology perspective, and we believe that our engagement with our microfinance customers is certainly going to be a win-win-win one. This wasn't a sales pitch. I just wanted to give you an overview of it. So thank you so much for listening, and all the best for 2017 you. Now may I request Mr. Amit Mathur, Associate Vice President, Information Hub, Enfin, to kindly join us on stage to present a mentor to service.